go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. All righty. Okay, so we are at uh, feedarcanda.com, and there are two things that you can use as a teacher to make your life easier. If you're a VIP Kid teacher, you can use our launcher that is a complement to the VIP Kid teaching app. And then we also have an extension that I recommend users use um, as a backup for VIP Kid. And then we have multiple integrations with other schools. So let me go ahead and show you both of those. You can get to these links to download and install from the help and support section. So right next to your account, you'll see all of these things. You can search the help center if you ever need to do that, but you'll notice there's browser extensions. And there's also the Feedback Panda Launcher. So there are two big differences between the launcher and the extension. As of right now, the launcher is only for VIP Kid. Uh, we are developing an integration with GoGo Kid, so it'll be for that as well. But for right now, because VIP Kid teachers can't teach through Chrome or Firefox or Safari or Edge, they have to teach through the app we have created a complimentary app for uh, them to use. You'll see that Victor's dropped the link for you as well in the chat. And this is going to populate the pandas in the classroom so that you don't have to do everything from scratch. And I'll walk you through that in just a minute. For here, we have the browser extensions. So this is if you teach at the school where you can teach through Chrome or Safari or Edge. Um, and these are the schools that we currently integrate with. Victor's got the link for that in there as well. We integrate with GoGo Kid, iTutor Group, AL07, Data ABC, Magic Ears, Landy English, Hujiang, and we are working on a Zebra English integration as well. So eventually you will see the pandas in those classrooms too. Um, if you have VIP Kid and you have the launcher, I definitely recommend you get the extension too while you can't teach in the classroom on a browser, you can put in feedback after the fact in the browser. So that's kind of a backup in case anything happens with the VIP Kid app, you'll still be able to put that feedback in quite quickly. So we're gonna walk through the launcher first and then we'll walk through the extensions. So after you have followed these directions to install the launcher, this is for Mac, there's a video, and this is for Windows and there's also a video. You can go to your applications folder on Mac, or if you're a Windows user, I like to do Cortana and just start typing in Feedback Panda and then it'll pop up. So you launch the Feedback Panda launcher first. This is super duper, duper duper, duper duper important. If you try to open VIP Kit first and then get Feedback Panda, Feedback Panda doesn't know because it's not a human the VIP kit is open. So it can't put in the pandas after the fact. You have to open Feedback Panda and say, hey, Feedback Panda, go open VIP kit so that you can put the pandas in. Um, if you open up your classrooms and everything and there's no panda in there and you are using the launcher, I recommend first thing you do is close everything down. So close down the VIP kit app and the Feedback Panda launcher. Make sure you open the launcher first and click this giant green button. You will see the green button regardless of whether you're a Windows or a Mac user. So we'll go ahead and open that. And this is what opens VIP Kid. And this is what puts the pandas in. Um, updates will often break the integration between the two. If that happens, uh, you'll notice that I, I try not to update. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it, that's up to you about whether you want to update, but I try not to update. If you do ever find that you click update now and you followed all the directions for opening Feedback Panda first and then opening VIP Kid, uh, we recommend reaching out to us for more help or just deleting the VIP Kid app, re-downloading it, and then it should work. If that's a lot, then you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you out at that time. Um, but just as an FYI. So in order to see the pandas, you can go to your classrooms and you'll see this panda right here. This panda makes your life super duper easy. So if you ever don't see this panda, make sure that you've closed out VIP Kid, opened the VIP Panda launcher first. 
This is why we have the launcher, so that you can just click on the panda. What's going to happen after you click on the panda is that it's going to take your student, it's going to take the course, and it's going to put them all together in a feedback for you. And I'll show you right here. So you just click on the panda. It'll pull everything in. You'll notice that I have taught this student already. I can see this information here. I can see the notes that I've written to myself. So these are the notes, and this is where you write the notes for this class. I can see where I've rated the stars. And I can see the feedback that I submitted before. In order to get a feedback here, we already have a student. We have a course as well. It's pulled that in magically for us. I don't have any templates already created. So I can either create my own template or I can pull one in from the cloud. So I'll show you how to pull it in from a cloud here. I'll show you how to create one for the extensions. And then I'll show you where you can create multiples for one course. So we're gonna go ahead and pull down the cloud. You'll notice it's already showing all of the templates that are associated with this specific course. We are by default showing you the templates that have been imported the most. We are working on a way to allow you to sort these templates by date and by imports. That way you can see the more recent templates as well. So if you have a course where they changed the content, but they haven't changed the course code yet, you won't have to filter out each one and be like, oh, that one's old, that one's old, that one's old, that one's old, that one's new. You don't have to do that anymore. You'll just be able to sort it out. And then you'll be like, okay, newer ones are probably the, the updated ones and it'll make your life a lot easier until you can get everything cleaned away for you. In this particular case, we're just gonna go with the one that's in, been imported the most. Double check, this is kind of what we need. I see that it has teacher Karen here. I'm not teacher Karen, I'm teacher Erica. So what we're going to do is change it to match exactly what I want. Here, when we click import, you'll notice this yellow bar. This says, please be sure to read and customize this template before you import it. So what's happened here is we've pulled down um, from the cloud and we're like, this is the one that we're gonna edit, make our own and save to our own personal cloud. So this is where you'll change everything that you need. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to teacher Erica. You'll notice it hasn't, I'm also going to change this here. You'll notice that it also hasn't changed right here on the male side. Whatever side you change, make sure you click the generate template for the opposite side. So I've edited the female side just because I did. <laughs> Could have done the male side. And now I'm gonna go ahead and generate the mail template. We have machine learning algorithm that will go through and change everything. So if you wrote she here, it will go ahead and change it to he here. Um, do be aware because it's a machine and it's not as smart as a human. Uh, it's always a good idea, best practice, pro tip, to read and make sure that the machine learning has got it right, um, just so that you don't have any weird blips. So now that I've adjusted it to be how I want it to be forever for my classes and my students, I'm going to import this template. You'll notice it's already added in the name here, and then it's gone ahead and done everything. I can add in the reward system if I want, so maybe I'll just say Avengers, and then I can add in teacher's notes for this particular class um, and say better with the ORE and URE over here, and then um, should work on football, just as an example. And that way, after you copy the feedback, go into here, oh, this is up and coming class, I can't. Um, so once the class is done, it'll, it'll have the feedback button, and then you just go into that feedback and paste it in, either right click, and click paste, do command V, control V, anything like that. So after you've got it in, Go ahead and save and close. So the next time you teach the student, it will populate everything that you need. All right, great. So that is the launcher. The only difference between the launcher and the extension is how you get to Feedback Panda. So it does the exact same thing for the extension, regardless of what school you have. Um, it's just how you get to it. So this is the launcher. We're gonna go ahead and close out of the app. And I'm gonna go ahead and close out of 
feedback panda. So from here, if you ever have a time where the VIP Kid app goes down or it stops integrating with feedback panda and you still have to get your feedback done, you can totally use the extension. I'm using a Chrome browser right now and you'll see in the top right corner, there's a little panda. That is the feedback panda extension. That's how you know it's there. You can also click on the puzzle piece and see if you have feedback panda there as well if it doesn't pop up in the right corner. So let's say the app went down, um, you know, I've just got done teaching and for some reason I can't do my feedback there. So I can go to the VIP Kid Teachers, I'm gonna log me in. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my classrooms and let me find a class that I've already done. We'll go back to June. And we're gonna go ahead and do our feedback here. You'll see the panda is still here. That's because I downloaded the extension. If you have a GoGo Kid account, um, I heard that you have to teach in their app too. So until we get the, the launcher file for that, you can do this in GoGo Kid. So if you're in your GoGo Kid classroom, you should see a panda there. You can click on it just the same as you would for VIP Kid. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this one. This is Elsa. And as it did with the launcher, it pulled in the name, it pulled in the template, and then it says select a template for the trial level plot or find a template on the cloud. So I don't have anything. Oh, I do have some. <laughs> um, so this is a different, um, a different trial, but we can go ahead and select this template. And then you'll see here, you can also pull it down from the cloud if you wanna do that. It's the exact same thing before. And if we want to change something, so the template is what is there all the time for every class. If you're teaching Elsa and she has a cat and the cat comes by and the cat is very cute, you can talk about it in this feedback. Don't go in and change your template because if you change a template, say that was a cute cat that we saw today, it's gonna to change it for every other template, uh, every other class you're ever gonna have after that, that is a major course trial. So here you can add in whatever you want. Um, say, I saw Elsa's cat today, it was so cute. And uh, same sort of thing, so you can do a reward system. Obviously, we're gonna put Frozen <laughs> because it's Elsa. And then, you know, you can write whatever you want for her. Um, you know, work on um, ABC or anything that you wanna do there. If you have something that you use for a lot of people, regardless of the course that it is, or you have an announcement that you wanna to give to your students, you can use a smart sentence. So here we have quite a few already created. We give you a couple um, templates here, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one to show you. We have a couple of different categories here that you can always adjust if you want. So maybe you have a final project and you wanna give something about that. Maybe a student had, um, headphone issues, and so you don't want to put this in a template because not every student for every course is going to have that sort of issue. So we could say name. Uh, you'll notice I had brackets here and the name in the middle. This is how Feedback Panda knows to populate the student's name for you automatically. We only have to do one side. You can do the generate for whatever side you're not editing. So we'll say name, had some headphone issues today. It was hard to hear him. Um, I look forward to um, being able to hear next class. You know, you can add it, whatever you want to do. And then we're going to generate the female template. Make sure it had, um, it goes ahead and changes those pronouns for you. And then it seems to work well. If you want to do a smart command, a smart command is something along the lines of, um, you know, uh, shift D, you hit shift and then D, it's a capital D. Every time you do a shift D in your feedback, it will populate that smart sentence. So I stay away from them because every time I write a capital D, I don't want the smart sentence to go in there. And I'm, I'm just really bad at it. But a lot of teachers have said that it's very helpful for them. So this is definitely an option that you can use. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the smart sentence. I can create a new smart sentence if I want. So maybe I'm going to be going on vacation or maybe I'm gonna be going on maternity leave or maybe I'll be taking a break from teaching because of you know, X, Y, Z. You can let your students know 
in these smart sentence categories. So I'm not going to, maybe I'll add um, the headphones here. We can start searching for headphones, headphone issues. And then you'll notice that it, it says Elsa had some headphone issues today. It was hard to hear. So we'll copy this feedback, go back to our classroom, whichever classroom we had. Um, this is actually an up and coming class, but whatever, you know, you click on the feedback um, part that you need and you can go in and copy and paste that. One of the things that you can do for this is if you decide that you don't like any of the templates on the cloud, so let's say you know you go through and you don't really like any of them, or you have, um, I had a spreadsheet of all the different courses and all of the different templates for each course. So I structured mine with like a struggling student, a feedback for a struggling student, a template for an average student, and then a template for an awesome student. So I had you know those columns for each course. You can import those or create your own. You don't have to pull it down from the from the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. You just click New. It will pull in the course that you're already on with the extension. Make sure that you assign it to a course, all of these courses, and then you can type your template as you want. So copy, paste, um, you know, name, did great, thanks. Go ahead and generate. And if you think this is a great feedback, you can share it on the cloud by clicking this button. So after we've created this template, you can notice that it's gone ahead and rewritten for us. All right, so um, from here, I'm gonna show you if you're a Zebra English teacher, until we get that integration built, um, hopefully it won't take too long. <laughs> or if you're a university teacher or a brick and mortar teacher or a swim teacher or a music teacher, um, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do uh, everything from scratch. So we have a couple of schools here on your dashboard. You can hover over the school and you can switch schools, whatever you have. So you'll notice I have Hogwarts and Magic Ears and I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete Hogwarts because that's gonna be my, um, my demo school here. Um, by default, teachers are allowed to have three schools However, if you need more, just reach out to us down here. We call this intercom, this little speech bubble button. Uh, this is how you get in touch with Victor or with me. You can search for some help in the articles. If you find something that's buggy and it doesn't behave the way it should, you can submit a bug report here. So anything that you ever need, this is the best way to get to us on intercom. So you just say, hey, Victor, can I have you know two more schools? And he'll say, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give you two more schools. Um, but in our case, you're gonna go ahead and add a custom school. You'll notice we have a list of schools. As an aside, if you have a school that you teach us, so let's say you teach with Protostar, and you want to have access to the cloud of all those shared templates, make sure you select it from this list. We have, um, on the back end, this list is kind of what the cloud is connected to. So if you have a custom school, there's not gonna be a cloud because it's a one-off sort of thing. We can build you that functionality if you have, you know, your teachers, fellow teachers wanna, wanna be in on that custom school, we can totally do that for you. But for now, if it's not a brick and mortar school and it's not a custom school and it's on this list, totally click on the one for this list. In our case, we're gonna do Hogwarts and it's a brick and mortar school. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then we're gonna add on the name of the school and it's Hogwarts. So you'll go through a tutorial video. You'll make sure that you agree to the terms and conditions. Always make sure to read them. And from there, you can see, um, you can create a feedback, a students, a course, or a template. Oh, can't do my fingers. <laughs> One of the things that teachers are often confused about is the difference between a feedback and a template. So here I have created a new feedback. You'll notice there are three parts that you need for this feedback. You need a student, you need a course, and you need the template itself. So the templates where you store the information for every class forever. You can always edit it in this feedback because that's specific to one student in one course at one time. Um, the template is for multiple times. Um, you know, one course, but multiple times. So you can add on your students from here. You can add on a student from, or a course from this uh, dashboard as well. You can also add on a template from this dashboard as well. What I like to do 
if I'm doing everything from scratch, is just create a new feedback and then add in the students from here. So you can select a student if you already have some created, or you can just go ahead and create a new student. So we're going to create a new student. Because we're at Hogwarts, we have to have Harry Potter. You can add in a birth date for your student. Um, if you do this, you'll see a pop-up coming close to that student's birthday. Harry Potter's about to have a birthday. Um, that way you can do, you know, sing a song, make a cake, give a special reward, anything like that, and just celebrate with that student. You can also add in a student ID number if you want, if you have it for your course, so maybe Blackboard. They have a student ID number for Blackboard totally added in here because when we create an integration with Blackboard, it'll already be in and you'll be good to go. If you don't know the student ID number, just leave it blank. We'll pre-populate it for you. You can do a description, um, so smart kid, <laughs> easily distracted, um, in case you have two Harry Potters, you know, or um, two Kevins, and then you'll create the student. You'll also have to create a course. Because this is a brick and mortar school, you don't have access to the cloud. If you have more than one teacher teaching at the same brick and mortar school, we can give you a cloud, uh, like your own private cloud for just those teachers. Just reach out to us on intercom and we'll make it work. All right, but for here we don't have a cloud, so we're gonna have to create a new course. And we're gonna give this, what's a good name? Anyone have a good course name? I feel like I should be able to name one. Care of Magical Creatures, awesome, thanks, Victor. So Care of Magical Creatures, and you can give a descriptive name. Um, you can give a description if you want beyond that. And the course ID number is the same thing. So if you have Blackboard, you can totally put in the course ID here. Um, if you don't know it, it's okay, you can just leave it off. And then we'll create this course. Um, just as a note, if you have one course, so as a VIP kid teacher, I know, Victor, I'm also a Harry Potter nerd. I hope... I hope they're not like, oh, <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter. Um, but if you have a course that you want to copy all templates from, so if you're a VIP good teacher, you know that they did major course, and then they have a new major course for levels two and three. We are working on a way to let you automatically see those templates so that you can use them um, crossover without having to adjust them. In the meantime, though, I found this neat trick. If you have... Uh, select a course, so select a course to copy all templates from. You have to find a course. This, because it's Hogwarts, there are no courses. If I were in the VIP Kids School, you could see all the courses that you have. So you would select, you know, MC-L2-U4-LC1, um, and then under your course name, you put new major course, L2, unit 4, LC1, and then you would go ahead and click create this course and it would automatically copy everything over for you. If you need help with that, definitely reach out here. Um, but for our case, we're gonna do care of magical creatures and we're gonna leave everything blank so that it can just create it for us. So now we have two of the three things done. We have Harry Potter and we have the course. You'll notice the template has become ungrayed out. So now we've got to either create a template or copy one over from our spreadsheet. We're gonna create a new template it has populated the course. We only have one course, so this is what we've got. We can change the name. So I'm gonna put Struggle Care of Magical Creatures, and um, if you have a specific tag, you can use that as well. VIP Kid Teachers have more tags than this, but because this is a brick and mortar. Um, and then we can say name. Um, did really well. He uh, got stung a couple times. And be careful. And then teacher Erica. And then we can generate the female template as well. It does appear that it popped over correctly. So this is good. If we think this is a great template, we'll share it to the cloud, but we'll go ahead and create. So this is where we can adjust if we want. Um, those scroots will get you. This will only be for this one template for Harry Potter. Uh, it won't stay for the actual um, I'm sorry, the feedback for Harry Potter, it won't stay for the entire template. You can use the reward system if you want. You can create a signature. You can do your teacher notes. So we're going to copy this feedback. I save and close. And then wherever you're inputting this feedback, so a lot of teachers do this on Zoom um, or Microsoft Teams, 
or Canvas, there is a little spot where they can do feedback for their assignments. They put it there, or you know, maybe they put it in an email address for their teacher or the parents. Um, anywhere that you need to do that feedback, it's already copied. So we'll just pretend Google is our feedback form, and we'll just paste. And then we're good to go. All right, great. So if you wanted to create multiple templates for the same course, you can totally do that. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and create add template. We're gonna select a course. We're gonna say awesome, care of magical creatures, and say, um, name did great, uh, no stings, and then teacher Erica, I can't spell. Generate, create this template, and now we can use this for a new feedback. Get a new feedback. We can create a new student. So let's just say this is Hermione. Hermione Granger. And we'll create. And then we're going to select the course we've already created. In this case, it's Care of Magical Creatures. Select this course. It's already populated the template that we last created. So the template we last created was awesome, but you can always change it. So here, it's creating a new one. Edit your current template that you have. Um, pull one down from the cloud if it's applicable or two new templates available. So I can do awesome and just kind of double check what it is and pop it up. Or I can do struggling because Hermione never struggled with anything. We'll stick with the awesome template, copy it. Uh, we can pretend this is the feedback and paste it there. And then you're good to go. We are always here. If you have any other questions, anytime intercom is the best way to reach us. We are always there on um, peak peak time for Beijing. So not um, daylight saving time notwithstanding, I think it's about seven to 10, seven to 11. Um, we're always there for you. And then we try to check it throughout the day. And we also try to be on there at least one weekend day. Um, so if we don't reach out to you immediately, please be patient with us. We'll get to you as soon as we can. You can also send us an email at info at feedbackcanda.com. But intercom is where we monitor everything and we can kind of see what kind of computer you're using. We can find you in our system um, back end if you reach us through intercom instead of email, because email you have to say, all right, who are you? <laughs> and then we have to go track you down. Um, but on intercom, it's very fast. We just click a button and we can find everything um, so we can help you. All right. In that case, thank you so much, Debs. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and happy teaching. Bye.